Good morning on this Friday morning. I hope that you're having a great day. I'm uh, back outside again. You may hear some of the crickets and things out there. I'm not sure, but frogs maybe. I just kind of been enjoying coming outside, just kind of spending some time out outside to do these. I um, uh, had a good meeting Wednesday night, enjoyed it. I really do appreciate your prayers. Uh, there are different ones. That, I know that you let me know that you've been praying for us and you know there's a lot of decisions got to be made a lot of things that uh, have to be done and uh, and you know and now they're talking about the coronavirus is actually surging again and and uh, some states and some cities are you know going into tighter lockdown some of them are you know I forget what what state it was but one of them came up and said you know, everybody's got to have a mask on in public. And so uh, it's <clears throat> it's just real confusing. I, and I think it's going to stay so, that way until after the elections uh, because I, th I think, yes, it's a health issue, but I think it's also a, uh, uh, a very political issue. And, and uh, it's a tool right now. And, and it's uh, for some, it's a useful tool. And so um, um, that's that. We'll uh, be meeting uh, Sunday, and of course it's uh, Father's Day, and we're excited about that. We're going to have our little special time, going to have our dessert auction, and, and then let everybody go home and just kind of spend uh, an evening together, and I'm thrilled about that. I, I think that'll be great, and, and I hope you get to have some very special time uh, doing that. I uh, still want to be in prayer for the Browns uh, as they are... Uh, going through, you know, it, it's it's hardest on them, and of course, uh, it's also hard on uh, Mike and Brooke, you know, because they, uh, you know, Mike was one to reach Brother John, and uh, you know, they have, they go but way back, and uh, so he's very close to the family, uh, and then now he's very close to the Brown family, and but uh, but mostly right now for the Browns because when you're present there and you have to face it every day. When you have to go and, uh, forgive me, but uh, you pack up stuff and things, and when you have to get up each morning and realize, you know, he's not going to be there, or you head to church and he's not going to be there for you, and gonna, not going to be interpreting, and, and not just, just not going to be riding with you and enjoying. And, and uh, for those of us that are away, it's going to hit us if the Lord allows us to go back to Africa, it's going to, it's going to hit us harder when we arrive back there. And it's just no brother John. Uh, he's just not there because he was such a, such a fixture there and uh, such a, a man that, that I just thoroughly enjoy uh, his, his spirit and his attitude. So uh, pray for them. Well, tonight I want to take a look at uh, Psalm 141. Psalm 141's Verse 3 says, Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Boy, do we need that. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth, and keep the door of my lips. Incline not my heart to any evil thing to practice wicked works with men that work iniquity, and let me not eat at their uh, eat of their dainties. You know, in times like these, uh, you know, then again, maybe all the time, you know, it's not just times like these, it's all the time. Uh, we need to set a watch and we need God to help us. We need God to set a watch. We need God to, 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 uh, through his spirit to convict us and, and remind us, uh, to put a guard on our mouth. Um, you know, and it's emphasized and repeated in a slightly different way. He says a guard to your mouth, uh, and, and that means uh, the guard to your mouth means careful uh, not to open it when it shouldn't be open. Uh, you know, that's to me, that's what it's saying. It's saying, you know, Lord, there's sometimes I just need to keep my mouth shut. He says, uh, but also to keep the door of our lips. Now, I believe that is, is a, it's the same but different. And then and that, I believe that is uh, when I speak, I need to weigh carefully what I say. And I need to be very wise 
and, and handle my words with wisdom and discretion and understanding. Uh, and so one of them is just God put a guard there and let me know and help me through your spirit and your, your leading and conviction uh, that there's sometimes I just need to clamp it shut. I just need to keep it shut. There's some things that just don't need to be said at all. There's some opinions that don't need to be given. There's some uh, times that we just don't need to, to interject into the conversation. Uh, and I'm not talking about, you know, just uh, being sociable. I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. When there's, when there's issues, uh, that there's, just, there's oftentimes, it's often better just say nothing. And, uh, and so, but then when it talks about my lips, it's talking about, okay, now uh, I'm going to open my mouth. The tongue's going to move. And so God help me to weigh carefully what I say. You know, kind of an illustration, and uh, you all know that I, I ran, most of you do, a military ministry for a lot of years, and, and our big program for those guys was athletics, and so, uh, you know, we'd go out, and especially, you know, my favorite season was football. I, I mean, we'd get, man, I mean, uh, you know, a low day, average, I mean, or low day would be 40, 50 guys, and then we'd have 70, 80. Sometimes, I mean, we had, I think one time, 138. Uh, sailors that came down. So, and we'd have four teams. Now, when you, know, you have 138 and you got four teams, you're pretty loaded uh, on teams. You know, guys are playing off, only playing offense. Some other guys are only playing defense. And, you know, but uh, so we'd play two games a night at least. Now, usually when we had that big crowd, we'd end up playing maybe three games, or even four games. And uh, we'd be out there five or six hours uh, playing football. And most all night I played, you know, I just switched from team to team. Whoever was down, I went and played for them, try to help them come back and try to help them, you know, because most of the sailors, uh, uh, they'd never played together or they'd never played at all. And so I'd get out there. Now, yeah, you, you, y'all you, probably never know me from my stories and things, and some of you understand this. Um, you know, I was an intense athlete, and so I was, uh, I'm pretty competitive. And so, it, and we had a very competitive league. Uh, we went out there, and it, it was, I mean, it was 11-on-11, 11 11 and it was flag football, but the way we played it, we called it flackle because it was full speed hitting everybody you could hit except the guy with the ball. And so, uh, uh, you know, so we, we played hard. We played hard, very intense, very aggressive, um, and uh, very competitive. Now, but yet, in all of that, our ultimate goal and purpose was supposed to be to get the sailors ready for a chapel service that was going to be taking place after it was all over. And in that chapel service, we were going to be trying to win them to the Lord. Now, God blessed. Man, in, in almost 20 years, the, the uh, statistically, uh, about uh, 90% uh, of the fellows who came down for the first time uh, who, were, who were lost got saved. Trusted Christ as their Savior. And, and a big part of that was the way it built, the, the sports built a camaraderie in their minds. But now a key factor in building that camaraderie is that we had to have right spirit and a right attitude. And so uh, since I was intense, uh, and that's the best way to you know, say it, uh, since I was intense and I was out there trying to bring a team back and trying to help a team uh, be competitive. And we always want to keep the games close. So, you know, no sailor felt like, man, I wish I hadn't come, you know, that they all, you know, really felt like it was a great game and a great opportunity. And so there were times in the game that I would be in the huddle and, and I would be running the ball or I'd go run out for a pass or I'd be going every play or maybe I'm even quarterback. And they would look at me and they would say, you know, hey, Brother Hooker, you call the play. And I would look at him and I'd just say, no, you call him. And I would look at one of the other men and say, you call him. Now, the reason I would do that, it's not because I couldn't think of a play. It was because I knew at the my emotional level, my competitive level, my drive was so high that I needed to be careful even opening my mouth, my mouth even to call a play. And so most of the the time we would play in those kind of games, 
I would go, I would run the play, I'd come back to the huddle, guys would be talking and talking and talking and some of them slapping you on the back and all that kind of stuff. I would never say a word. Well, the reason I wouldn't say a word is because I thought if I ever open this thing, it's going to, I'm, 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 I'm turning it loose. And once it turns loose in the heat of competition, it's no telling what I'm going to say. It's no telling what words are going to come out of there, you know, in, in frustration or anger or whatever. So it was better for me just to keep it shut. Now, there were, the, now, uh, when I did, the times that I did speak uh, in the game after the game, then I had to make sure that I kept my words right when I did speak. And so that's what he's saying. He's saying sometimes keep your mouth shut. Other times when, you, when it's time to open your mouth, then let's think about it. Let's make sure that we're diligent to control the words that, that, that come out of your mouth. And so God says that we should incline our ear, uh, our hearts, uh, should not incline our hearts to, to uh, anything evil. And so, you know, that's what he said here. He said, uh, incline not my heart to any, uh, any evil thing. And so he says, don't incline your heart to any evil thing. Now, life in some sense mimics athletics or athletics mimics life. When we're in an intense situation, uh, which is a reality, a, a form of conflict, usually. Uh, usually that intense situation is some form of conflict or brewing conflict. Uh, and, and in truth, you know what a conflict is? It is an extreme form of competition. Competition so often is a pride thing. It's, it's you know, I believe I can defeat you. I'm going to go against you. And pride says I can, I'm better than you. And so uh, conflict, only by pride cometh contention. And so conflict is, is pride. And pride is, even conflict is, a, is a, a kind of a ultra magnified form of competition. So God says we're not to incline our hearts to anything evil. If we're not to incline to evil, we must be careful not to place ourselves under or in the influence of those who have evil in their hearts. So if I'm going to not incline myself into evil, one of the things I got to do is I got to stay away from people who are going to encourage evil or who are going to perform evil or who are going to speak about evil. I got to stay away from that. Uh, for the evil in their hearts will come out of their mouths because their mouths don't have a watch, a gate uh, there. And, and it'll be revealed. Whatever they speak is ultimately going to be revealed in their actions and their words. Now, these actions and words will influence our actions and words. That's why good people uh, start to, you know, start to protest. And, and, and there's some good, really good people that have uh, an objection and have something, a statement they're trying to make and a uh, and, and legitimate statement they're trying to make. But then there's others who will come in. And uh, let me just say, from everything you see on the news, this is not a white-black thing because a lot of the instigators who come in to instigate evil, they're white. And they're part of this, uh, you know, part of uh, the Antifa group. And a lot of that is just college white kids that have been brainwashed and bought off into, into socialism. And so uh, they come in and they instigate this violence. Now, what happens is, is that good people, when they're around these, when they start to get sort of outnumbered, it's like this. You get, you get in a football game, you got a bunch of really good guys with a great spirit. And, uh, you know, you have a tendency, even if you struggle with your spirit, to keep your spirit because everybody around you is. But you go out there and you have a good spirit and there's two or three of you on the team or three or four or five on the team. But you got five or six or seven that don't have a good spirit. And their spirit often is uh, when the, the bad spirit is almost always more vocal and more uh, uh, demonstrative. And so that spirit uh, starts it starts changing the spirit of those who had a good spirit. 
And uh, it's just, it's just, it's, it's something we must be. And God's saying we've got to be careful that we don't let people with a bad spirit influence our spirit. And in order to do that, sometimes we got to avoid certain situations and certain people. Now, so if we are to set a guard on our mouths, we must set a guard also on our eyes, on our ears, and where our feet take us. And, and, and what we allow uh, to come in as far as the news, the social media, the videos, the things, uh, what you allow in is, is going to influence your spirit. And it's going to influence what, you, what happens and what comes out of your mouth. So no matter how good the result may seem, or how good uh, something, you know, well, what's being promised uh, to us, Evil is evil, and it will destroy us if I allow myself to get involved in it. And, and that's why God says, you keep put a, excuse me, put a guard on your mouth. You, you put a guard on your lips. You control that. And you, you watch being around people, and, and don't, don't go around people and let those people influence you because it will then tear down the guard, tear down the barrier that was guarding your mouth and your lips, and you'll begin to speak. And folks, when we, whatever we begin, uh, we, be, we think it, we speak it, and then we perform it. And so, and that's even in, you know, in sin. Uh, and so, uh, evil is evil, and it will destroy us and, and others when it's allowed in our hearts. For, our, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And as the mouth speaks, influence begins, and actions and words come forth uh, from others. And so we just need to be very careful that we, uh, we are careful what we allow to influence us, but we're even more so as Christians and part of the church to be careful what we allow to come out of us. And that's why God says, be careful of that. Put, you know, he's literally asking God, God, do you put a guard? Uh, you know, it's kind of like God put a muzzle on me, if that's what it takes, to guard my mouth. And when my lips open, Lord, let me do them with wisdom and discretion and carefulness. And and and, and the Lord um, is clear, you know, that if I'm going to keep control, then I got to make sure that I don't I don't put myself in the environment of the evil man, for his evil will affect me. And uh, and, and and when it talks about the dainties, that's what I mean. It sometimes they make it sound so good, so right, so wonderful, and so beneficial, and and maybe you're going to benefit out of it. But um, but it's it's you don't want. That's, that's not the dainties that you want. And uh, I hope that makes a little bit of sense. I just want us to keep our hearts and keep our, keep our mouths and keep our tongues. And, and we do really good at that as our church, but, but as a people in all environments, whether that's in our family, uh, whether that's in the church, whether that's in, in, in society, as we go to the grocery store or wherever, we've got to be, have a, have that God's holy muzzle on our mouths and uh, just let those lips open to smile at somebody and to say, God bless you and, uh, and to maybe witness to them or to pray for them and, uh, and let that be our response. And it will be if we keep ourselves from the evil man. And I apologize, train's coming by, so you can probably barely hear me now. That thing gets pretty loud in the darkness over here. Uh, it's quite a ways away, but uh, it gets pretty loud. I hope that's a help to you, and I hope it's an encouragement. Man, I just, we got to fight to keep our spirit right in a world that's gone crazy uh, with viruses and, and people hurting people and, and, uh, and just sin abound. But, hey, where sin abounds, grace doth much more. So the grace of God is here for us today. And we got to tell others about that grace. Amen. All right. Uh, God bless you. And we love you. And uh, just be careful.